Welcome to Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco, bringing you interviews with industry experts and regular folks who tested the job search waters and succeeded, and strategies to tell your story and land your job interviews in 60 days, guaranteed. Here's your host, Virginia Franco. Um, I thought that it is time to do another podcast on whether it's worth it or not to get LinkedIn and pay for it. Um, I think I covered this sometime last year, but LinkedIn honestly changes so much that um, I thought I would take a deep dive into what's offered with the free and what's, what is offered with the paid and um, give you my thoughts on whether or not it is worth it to invest the extra money in it, especially if you are in the middle of a job search. Um, What I will talk through is, again, what what you get for a free account, and then identified a couple of key things that you get with a paid account, as well as some workarounds for if you decide to bypass the paid and go for the free. Um, Sometimes there's workarounds, sometimes there's not. And then at the end, I will um, give you my thoughts on whether I think it's worth it. Um, Just again, my two cents. So um, here's what you get with a free account. The basic account lets you build your profile. You can also build a network that can include colleagues, classmates, even strangers by sending out LinkedIn connection requests. You also don't have to pay to make or request a recommendation or to read or receive an in-mail message that comes your way. An in-mail is the um, LinkedIn's email function. Uh, With a free account, you can save up to three customized searches and set up weekly alerts on them. Um, Customized searches are where you say, I want to know what people are working for this company or what people um, work in HR within this organization, that kind of thing. Um, What I have discovered, and this has happened little by little, but it's really happened dramatically during the past year, is that slowly but surely, the free version offers less, comparatively speaking. Um, But even though that's the case, that still doesn't mean that premium offerings are for everyone. First, let me start out by explaining the three different plans that LinkedIn offers. There are three premium plans. The first is business premium on LinkedIn.com, which is a site that all of us go to, whether it's free or paid. Um, The difference is that obviously the business premium has more features and functionality. LinkedIn also offers two other paid plans. One is called Sales Navigator, which is, you know, it's targeting sales professionals who might want to use it for lead generation using LinkedIn's uh, database. And then the other is Recruiter Lite, which is used by talent professionals like recruiters, HR managers, all of that, to scour the site for candidates. Um, People in sales might get value from uh, using LinkedIn Sales Navigator to identify leads. And and for some of you, your company might even pay for it. But for the purposes of my review, I'm going to focus on the business premium on LinkedIn.com. That way you can determine if it is beneficial for you to pay the, uh, the fees that uh, have gone up over the years as well um, for your job search and for continuous networking. So I've identified seven primary features that come along with the business premium. And then again, if there's a free there's a workaround for those of you who want to have a free account. I'll share that with you. Right now, you the fee is $47.99 a month for premium. And I think that if you do a year out, you actually get a little bit of a savings. But here's what you're going to get. Number one is unlimited people browsing and expanded search results. So that means you, if you pay, you have access to view any profile as far back as third degree connections in your search results. Um, with the free, you just you can't go back as far as my understanding. Um, and unfortunately, there is no workaround with this on for free accounts. The second big feature, and it's one of my favorites that you get with LinkedIn Premium, is the who's viewed your profile. Actually, everyone gets this feature. It's just you get more uh, capabilities when you pay. So if you have set your profile viewing options to display your name and headline when viewing profiles, Um, Premium members will see everyone who's viewed your profile in the past 90 days. 
In addition, um, the premium members get you get access to some trends and insights on how they found you. Um, but for instance, I use that to say, did someone find me by typing in my name? Did they find me from an article or did they find me from, you know, someone else they uh, knew? You also find out how many of them work in one place versus another. So it's, it's pretty interesting from an analytics standpoint. Uh, in addition to the really great intel that comes from knowing if someone checks out your profile, because um, you can reach out to them, you can send them a connection request, shoot them an email, thank them for checking out your profile. Um, to me, that's, that is probably the best part about having access to extended information on who's viewed your profile. Um, LinkedIn will measure an increase or decrease in your weekly viewership. Every Sunday, they update it, and you'll find out if you got more people or less people visiting your site. Um, so for job seekers that incorporate LinkedIn engagement as part of the job search, I think this the ability to measure increases or declines is a really valuable piece of information to see if what you're doing is working or if it's not. Uh, again, for both free and paid, depending on the privacy settings of those who are checking you out, you can see where they work, their job titles, and how they found you, but you just can't see as much. Um, the workaround for free account holders is that you, you can see some information, but only the five most recent views in the last 90 days. Um, and that's just not nearly that much intel if you plan on using that kind of information for a, a job hunt or expanding your network. Um, the other, the third feature that I identified is, uh, I call it expanded profile viewing. Um, with premium, the quote unquote open profile is the default mode, which means that any LinkedIn member will automatically see your full profile unless you change your privacy settings and they can reach out to you, even if they are not in your network or don't have in-mail credits, which is, um, you know, you get, you get a certain number of in-mails that you can send every, uh, month if you are a premium member. Um, for job seekers who don't have a big network and they really want to cast as wide a net as possible and could benefit from their full profile getting seen by those outside their network, this is really a huge plus. Um, if you have a humongous network um, and uh, you that that allows people to see more than just maybe your headshot and your um, title, then um, you might not need it. But for those that, again, that are looking to maybe target people at, you know, different companies and all of that where they don't know people, the ability to um, have open profile as a default mode, I think is a real, a real benefit. And unfortunately for free account holders, there is just no workaround that I could find for that. Um, the fourth feature is the potential job notifications. Uh, those who pay for premium get directed to open positions that are identified as a potential fit based on you know, LinkedIn's analysis of your skills, experience, salary requirements, and the education that you include in your profile as well as in your settings. Um, again, this is all very keyword-driven, a lot of the skills and experience. So this uh, feature isn't going to work if your LinkedIn profile is not... Uh, has, if, if, you, if you don't have a sort of a smart strategy with regards to putting keywords in the right places. Um, there is a workaround for free account holders through the use of job boards and by setting up alerts for companies of interest, you might not really need this kind of uh, a benefit. And, and honestly, I'm not 100% confident that the roles that are a potential fit are I'm not always confident that those, the matching that goes on is super reliable, and that is in part because of the keyword issues. Um, number five is LinkedIn's learning, um, continuous learning. A lot of you know that LinkedIn purchased lynda.com back in 2015, and then they rebranded it LinkedIn Learning. You can access this massive open online course website. Um, when you go to your homepage and you click the, the uh, there's a taskbar at the top, the one on the very far right is LinkedIn Learning. Um, and you can get video courses taught by industry experts in software, creative, business skills. Um, I actually just went online really quickly to see and I thought, okay, let's say you want to learn about Google Analytics. When I typed, went to LinkedIn Learning, I found two classes on it. Um, and again, it's not Google certified, but it's a course that can teach you what you need to know. Um, there are thousands and thousands of, uh, of 
videos and audios that you can listen to to enhance your learning, um, give you some credibility, um, especially if you're trying to close a skills gap on your resume. Uh, in terms of the workaround, there, there really isn't one. Um, before the acquisition, subscription fees for Linda were $30 a month. Now it comes part and parcel with your LinkedIn premium profile. So if you don't have premium, you can't get it. Um, and that means that if you need to upskill or close a knowledge gap, you'll have to pay for or search for some other free learnings online. Uh, the next one is in-mail messages. And I alluded to those a little earlier. When you pay for premium, you get 15 in-mail credits per month. The good thing is that unused credits are accumulated. Um, in other words, they're not use it or lose it. And you can recover a credit if the person to whom you send it ignores you or ghosts you, which, you know, that happens. Free members sadly do not have access to in-mail, which means they cannot message anybody through the platform. Um, this didn't used to be the case. It used to be that free, free membership gave you a couple. Um, it seems that they have stripped that feature away. However, there is uh, a workaround um, for free account holders. You can avoid using in-mail altogether by sending a brief note as part of a connection request. And then once that person connects with you, if they do, you can then, once through your connection, you can send them a message without needing to use the in-mail. Um, other work workarounds include do, you know, doing some online sleuthing to find the person's email, reaching out to them on other social media platforms. Uh, the thing, what I love about email is you can use it to reach anyone. Um, however, I I take the time to only use email for people that I can tell are active on LinkedIn. Um, and you can do that by going to someone's activity and seeing if they've liked or engaged on anything on LinkedIn. And, and if they haven't for a while, you're sort of probably wasting your in-mail. It'll fall on deaf ears. Um, so it's a, it's, in-mail is a nice thing to have, but to me, it's not sort of a deal breaker because there are good workarounds. Um, and I love sending a connection request, waiting until they connect and then reaching out from there because if they don't connect, um, they probably would have ghosted my in-mail anyway. The last piece or last feature that I wanted to talk about is called it's business insights. Paid account holders have access to growth rates, hiring trends, and even hyperlinks um, to crunch-based data if the company is private equity or venture capital funded. Um, this is something that's new. The insights are growing in terms of the, the value. So it just it really depends on how much of a data wonk you are and, and how in terms of how you'll use this information. There is a workaround. Um, most of the information provided through business insights it is available through internet sleuthing. So if you're willing to do some digging, the perk really may not be worth the expense. Um, I like it because it offers sort of one-stop shopping. But again, if you don't want to pay the money, there is a way to get this. So all in all, what I would say in terms of is it worth it or not to pay for it, um, if you are searching for a job um, and you would find value in being able to reach out to people that are not in your network through in-mail um, and you think that you will use uh, some of the insight that you get from people that are looking at your profile, um, or you'd like to know additional information on roles for which you might be well suited for, that for which you would be well suited, then it might be worth it to, to pay for LinkedIn Premium. Um, additionally, if your network is small, then the ability to to network with those for, for people outside your network to see your profile is really, really useful. So bottom line, try the free account and then try the premium account. You get 30 days for free. There's, there's uh, no downside to it. See for yourself and then go with what works for you. Um, the great thing is that you can pay month to month, and which means if you upgrade, downgrade, or change your mind at any time, you're not. You, you luckily you're not going to lose any paid or premium features until your billing cycle ends, um, and they're not going to charge you once you've canceled. So, uh, you know, weigh them both out. I pay for premium. I found it's worth it. The other cool thing is that. Once you, whatever you lock into premium today, if you decide to stay with it, 
LinkedIn's constantly going to keep, keep changing their plans and you're going to always stay grandfathered into what you have. Um, I have an account that I paid for maybe four years ago. It's not even offered anymore. It has a lot of functionality um, that's not available today, but because I got it four years ago, it's worth it. Um, so I hope that helps. I'm sure we'll be doing this again next year. If you have any questions or you know of any workarounds that I was not able to identify, please, please send me an email, vafrancoresumes at gmail.com. Send me a message through LinkedIn, my Twitter, Facebook, all of that. Thanks, guys. You've been listening to Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco. To learn more about storytelling strategies to catch the eye of today's skim online readers, hiring and decision makers, go to www.virginiafrancoresumes.com.